we got some problems. Yeah, let's uh, get some heavy. turn this bad boy around. So this isn't the video that I plan to do today. I wanted to check out some of the new Fantech T30 fans. You guys have been saying these things are pretty awesome. Fantech sent over uh, like a test kit with some fans. It's even got like a little wind tunnel in there. We were going to do some experimenting and we were even going to test the first place fan showdown fan on the little test kit and see how it worked. But uh, came downstairs like any other day, hit power on my PC here and nothing happened, which is really weird because I was, I was using it last night. Things were working great. Turned it off, went to bed, woke up, and now it's dead, which is a bummer. So we're going to build a PC today, or at least tear this one apart, find out why it's broken, and rebuild it or replace some things. I don't really know what's going to happen. Thank you to Digital Storm for sponsoring this video. Digital Storm's passion is chasing performance. Their motivation is delivering the world's most advanced PCs. With 20 years experience, their computers are built from the ground up with unmatched engineering and thermal design. Combine that with industry partnerships featuring the latest technology and they can deliver incredible power and performance that's trusted by enthusiasts, gamers, and content creators. Digital Storm is committed to improving their craftsmanship to drive a better customer experience. Each PC is handcrafted with attention to detail, including the placement of individual components and the routing of cables to improve airflow and upgradability. Building a PC is only part of the journey. Digital Storm is proud to back every customer with lifetime support from their team of in-house experts. Customers are family, and they're dedicated to resolving issues as quickly as possible. So if you're looking for a great experience, a great machine, and peace of mind, choose Digital Storm for your next PC build. Check the link in the description below, and thank you again to Digital Storm for sponsoring this video. Now, if you've been around for a while, you probably actually remember the video where we built this PC. It's a 3950X, 2080 Ti inside of the Lian Li 011 Dynamic XL case. It's got the big old honking EK distribution block, which I really like. But it's had some issues since we built it. You can notice that the runs are very crooked, you could say. This was my first water cooling attempt, and it was, it was easier than I thought. So we're going to take this opportunity to correct some of the things we don't like. For one, uh, I got too, big of, too thick of radiators. I'm going to move this one to the bottom. We're gonna take this one out, save it for another project someday, get a thin one from up top so we get some more clearance for our fittings here. Redo the loop, redo the, put some new cooling in it, clean any gunk that we might have built up, and hopefully find the issue that's making this 3950X not work. Now I've done a little bit of troubleshooting because initially I thought that it was the power supply that had went bad for whatever reason. So I got this little test thing that I have. I normally use it for turning the power supply on and off to fill up like water cooling loops or power fans, you know, stuff like that. But I unplugged the 24 pin, plugged it in here and power supply fires up. No problem. So that's not it. Now I have a slight suspicion that the motherboard was kind of going downhill. The reason being is that every now and then I notice that when I turn this thing on, the motherboard would forget what the priority boot disk was and it would just kind of go to a blank screen and that's what happened. You have to go into the BIOS, change the boot priority, and then it would fire up normally. And it might run normally like that for a while. Then one day it would just be like, I don't know which disk to use, and it would just quit. But now when you plug it in, turn the power supply on, you notice that the little power light, or the power switch light, lights up. So things look like they're perfect. But if you hit the power switch on the case or on the motherboard, it just turns off. Nothing happens. And that's a real bummer. <laughs> so, yeah, water cooling systems like this look cool, and I really enjoy building them and looking at them. But when you gotta fix a problem like this, they kind of, they kind of suck. Now, if it does turn out to be the motherboard, that's a problem. I do have a backup plan. Um, it's not ideal, and it's going to be kind of a CPU downgrade in some ways, but. The motherboard that I'll be using is pretty awesome. I've had it for a while because I wanted to do like an awesome HTPC VR build. But you probably have noticed that it's impossible to buy graphics cards for a normal price. So it's kind of just been a bunch of parts sitting around for no good reason. So you might use them. Now the CPU we'll be using if things don't go to plan is the Intel 10900K. And I actually purchased this after the or 11900K came out uh, because I prefer more cores to the uh, additional frequency, I guess. You can still run this thing like 5.2 gigahertz, but I want the more cores for the type of stuff I do. But I will be losing 
six, I'll go from, I'll be going from 16 to 10. So I might lose some performance. I'm, I will lose some performance in video rendering and stuff like that, but I might gain some gaming performance. So that's a cool thing. The motherboard's pretty exciting though. This is the Z590 Carbon EKX. And I've had this thing for a while and I wanted to use it on that build, but if this one's dead, this motherboard will look actually pretty good in this system. So let's go to, let's go to Micro Center and see what we can find. I'm dumb. While on my journeys to Micro Center, I started to actually think about all the issues that I've had with this PC over the last few months. And I already mentioned that I would turn it on every now and then and the, the boot priority would just be gone. And I would just have to go in there, change the boot priority and reset. And I just did it. And I didn't think anything of it. I was like, oh, this is annoying, but whatever. And I also thought back to a time where I turned the PC on, everything worked fine, but the fans were all going crazy. And I went into the, the BIOS again and I noticed that my fan curve that I had set out, set up, had also been reset to default. And I thought that was weird as well. And then I got to think even more, and I remember when I changed my fan curve, I also had to turn on my XMP again because that got reset. What could be the cause of all that? And I got back here and I was like, wonder if it's something to do with my CMOS. So I just simply went down to the CMOS battery, pulled it out, let it sit for a minute, plugged it in with no battery. Doesn't have a battery now. And, uh, yeah, it works just fine. <laughs> so the problem is, my motherboard is not dead. I just have a bad CMOS battery. So I'm going to replace that and everything should be good to go. Um, kind of a bummer. Don't get to use this sweet little motherboard or this other processor. Maybe one day we can, we can build that PC. But I think at this point we've, we've gone far enough that we're going we're gonna to just go ahead and do a little maintenance anyway. We're gonna, I got a vertical GPU mount, so we're going to add that. I'm going to redo my custom loop, try to make everything a little straighter. We're gonna swap out some RAS, get some more space, clean everything, repaste the CPU. It's been about a year since I built this. So we're gonna repaste it to try to get some better temperatures. Also, we're gonna check all the blocks and see if this liquid with like solid particles in it has clogged up anything. And if it has cleaned those, then we're just gonna to go to distilled water. So now let's get into it. So all in all, things not looking too bad. There's a little bit of corrosion right here and there is some debris in there, but I don't think there's enough in there for me to warrant uh, taking the block apart, trying to clean out the fins. This one actually looks a little better than the GPU. 
they're not too gunked up. So I think we're going to actually repaste both the CPU and GPU. They've been running for a little over a year, so can't hurt. So let's start with the CPU monoblock. I want to be kind of careful here because I don't have any thermal pads. I don't want to go get them. You should replace your thermal pads, but yeah, we're not going to. Oof, sticky. Doesn't look too bad. It's a little bit, a little bit dry. Definitely not like it was when it was put on, but it's, it's not too bad, really. Okay, let's have a look. I will say I think I've ran my GPU a little harder than my CPU over the last year. But we'll see how it looks. About the same. It's getting a little dry, but seems usable. But we'll clean it up just, just because. So now we are to the fun part. I get to run new hardline tubing. Uh, I've already put two in on the bottom because it's real tight underneath this vertical GPU mount. And I get pretty creative to try to get this fitting to kind of line up with that one. It's still not perfect. If you notice, this tube and this tube aren't parallel, and that's kind of driving me nuts. So I might mess around with that for a minute. Hopefully, when this is all said and done, it looks better than it did before. You'll have to, you'll have to let me know if that's, if that's the case. Also, you might notice new t-shirt. Me and Cooper went outside and played some frisbee for a little break earlier, and I threw it, I threw it too far. And behind my house is a ravine, and it's late in the season. So if you ever seen a golden retriever jumping in the woods in the fall, they come out as like a giant burr, and it was a nightmare trying to get all the burrs out of his fur. But yeah, he's taking a nap. Uh, I'm gonna do this, and hopefully, when it's all said and done, it's gonna look good. So everything is back together. It seems seems like everything's functioning as as required. All the lights are on. I did do some gaming um, after I put everything together just to make sure everything functioned right. All the the temperatures were good, and for the most part, they are a little bit better. I do run my fan curves a bit slower than most, so my temperatures could be could be better. But I much more prefer uh, a system that's quiet that runs a little hotter than one that's cool that really loud. Also, I do really like vertical GPU mounting. I'm glad I did add this. And I straighten my, run, my runs out a little bit. I, I improved this one a little bit. That's extra space with the smaller rads means there's not as much tweaking on the, the water lines. It's not perfect, but it's, for a second attempt, much better. And uh, it's one of those things you just get better as you, as, you do, as you do more of them. Now that I do have the fluid change, though, I can see that the blocks do have a little bit of staining from that solid fluid I used, but nothing, nothing crazy. I could probably take it apart and uh, clean it out, but maybe, maybe we'll save it for the next time. For the most part, everything looks... Looks good and there's no leaks. What did we really learn about this whole situation? Well, one, doing maintenance on your PC is, is, a, is a good thing. So although it does take some time to tear everything apart, clean it all out, it's worth it if you want to keep your system running for a long period of time, especially now when you can't really buy too many PC parts. You want to keep what you got going. And then also for me personally, I learned to not jump to conclusions. When I came downstairs and hit the power button and nothing happened and I was using it the night before, I immediately thought that the motherboard died for whatever reason based on always having to change the boot priority. Something like that made me think that the motherboard was going bad. Uh, it wasn't until I, you know, took some time to drive to Microsoft and started thinking about all the things that had happened that I was like, well, I wonder if the CMOS keeps getting reset or if the battery would die and I pulled the battery out and it immediately started working. So I guess Always think about the issues you're having and uh, try the easiest solution first before jumping to, oh my gosh, my motherboard's broken. Because regardless if you have a system that's fully water-cooled or not, replacing your motherboard <laughs> takes a bit of time and it's not, the, it's not the best experience. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you uh, want to stop back for the T30 video, I also have another one planned where we're going to do some, some more in-depth design work. It's been a while since uh, I have designed or created anything that's more complex than like a fan or... A simple bracket. So we're going to try to do something 
a bit more out there. Should be a lot of fun. See you next time.